Hey folks, so welcome back to another Power Up lesson. And um, we're kind of jumping around a wee bit from topics, but I think that's useful to kind of give you a bit of variety. And today's lesson is going to be on internal resistance part one. So this is more the basic one, and then we'll look at the slightly more advanced topic in the next Power Up lesson. So as always, we start with prior knowledge. So what do we expect you to know about internal resistance? Well, first of all, there is a whole bunch of terms for you to remember. So things like electromotive force, EMF, internal resistance, loss faults, terminal potential difference, or VTPD, ideal supplies, short circuit, and open circuits. Now, the first kind of three or four are the most common one we use. These three here are not that common. We also expect to use appropriate relationships to solve problems involving EMF, loss faults, TPD, current and external assistance and internal assistance, i.e. using this equation here. So remember, there are two equations for internal assistance. The first one, which is this one here, that's the most common one. And then the second one, which we can get from the first one by replacing V with I times R. And the other equation you might be expected to know about is uh, resistances for resistors in parallel and resistors in series, which you learn in NAT5. Now, I've only written down the parallel one here because I kind of expect you to know that for resistors in series, you add them together to get the total resistance. Similarly, I would know, I would expect to know how to use this equation to find the total resistance for resistors in parallel. So, here are some definitions that I would like you to learn. So the best way to do this is simply to copy these down, write them out again onto maybe flashcards or write them out again, try and remember these, okay? A few things I wanna talk about first of all is that electromotive force is defined as the electric potential, it, excuse me, energy supplied to each coulomb of charge that passes through a cell. Or as we've been kind of told in class, it's just the energy per coulomb. OK, so energy per coulomb is perfectly valid as a definition. Another fact that I want you to remember about EMF is that it's a potential difference across the terminals of a cell when no current is flowing, i.e. an open circuit. So a wee bit of physics there. First of all, um, we would have done this experimentally where to measure the EMF, we disconnect the battery from the circuit and just put a voltmeter across it. That will give you the EMF. In other words, when, it's, when there's no current being drawn from the battery, that's when you're measuring the EMF. If there's no current being drawn from a, a circuit, it's called an open circuit. But there's a definition at the bottom later on. Internal resistance, that's simply the resistance of supply due to materials it's made from, because any material that we use to make the battery will have its own resistance. So that means the battery will also have a resistance and that's called the internal resistance. Remember, it's represented by a small r and a small resistor in series to our cell. Loss faults, this is a really important um, definition. It comes up quite a lot in the exams and you are expected to know this is a definition. It's a potential difference across the internal r. So remember, potential difference is just the more rigorous word for voltage. And I would ask you to try and use the word potential difference rather than voltage. And if you remember, there is a reason for why it's called potential difference. Next one, terminal potential difference. This is usually the potential difference across the load resistors in a circuit. The load resistors are big R essentially. Okay, so that's actually the resistance in the circuit. It might be a bulb, it might be a motor. An ideal supply, um, this is not a very common definition, but it is in the uh, arrangements documents. So simply, it supplies a constant voltage and any current we wish, provided we connect the correct resistance. And we don't really do this a lot in the class, so that's why it's not a very common uh, definition. But just have it up your sleeve. A short circuit, you might remember this from that 5 It's when a low resistance connection allows a current to flow through it um, rather than through the circuit. So the classic example is if you've got a bulb and you connect a wire across that bulb, the current will go through the wire rather than the bulb because the wire has a lower resistance, so it's easier for the current to flow, 
so it takes that route and the consequence is that the bulb doesn't go on. Now in higher we talk more about short circuiting batteries so we'll talk about that in the next power up lesson. Open circuit I've kind of mentioned that already but the formal definition is if there's a point of infinite resistance which stops the current flowing in the circuit and a point of infinite resistance is simply a gap because if you put a gap into the circuit then the chances of the current flowing or jumping over that gap is actually very 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 small. So a whole bunch of words for you to remember, write them down, make sure you can uh, memorize these and repeat these to yourself. Okay so how do we measure EMF? So first of all uh, a few basic things you need to be aware of. How do we measure EMF? How do we measure VTPD? And how do we measure the short circuit current through an EMF? So if we've got the circuit here, how do we measure those three quantities? Well, to measure the EMF, first of all, we have no current can be drawn using open circuit. So what that means is usually there's a switch in your circuit. So if you open the switch, you can just measure the EMF. So as long as there's no current being drawn, you measure the EMF. You would connect your voltmeter across the cell. I'm not going to draw it in because it'll make it a bit complicated. And then you would just measure the EMF by opening the switch. Like that. To measure the VTPT, current must be drawn and the voltmeter is connected across the load resistor. It can also be connected across the cell. And if that's the case, don't get confused because if it's connected across the cell, and the switch is closed, okay, like this, then what you're actually measuring is the VTPD now and not the EMF. So just be clear in your head, it doesn't matter if the voltmeter is connected across the cell or the load resistor, if the switch is closed, then you're measuring VTPD. Finally, to measure the short circuit current, that means the seal load resistance, short circuit current is equal to the maximum current. So all you do to measure the short circuit current is you disconnect the um, the, uh, the, back, the resistor and then you just plug in your ammeter to it and then that's you measuring the uh, short circuit current. And we'll look at this in more detail in the next lesson. Okay, so let's look at how some of that information is used. So for the circuit shown below, you've got an internal resistance with a load resistor R. Describe how the EMF is measured. State what happens to the reading on the voltmeter as more current is drawn and justify your answer. So as always, feel free to pause this and try it yourself. I'll take you through the answers. So how do you measure the EMF? Hopefully you're able to tell me that you create a gap in the circuit so no current is drawn and that's it. What happens to the reading on the voltmeter as more current is drawn? Justify your answer. Now, whenever you see justify, that's what we call a command word, and it means you have to explain why. Now, you can explain it in words, or you can explain it using an equation, which can sometimes be easier because then you can refer to the equation. I'm going to give you both solutions. Both are perfectly valid as long as the physics is correct, but you can pick which one you think is easier. So the first one is, as more current is drawn, a greater potential difference across the internal resistance develops. This means the reading on the voltmeter decreases. And remember, in this case, because there's a current being drawn, the voltmeter is reading the VTPD. Another way to do it is with the equation, E is equal to V plus IR. If I increases, then IR will increase as well. So it's really saying the same thing as the top here. Since E is a constant, then V must decrease because if this quantity is getting bigger, this is a constant, then this must get smaller. It's up to you which one you prefer. The nice thing about this is you can kind of just memorize it if you don't really understand it. I would say memorization is your, kind of your last call if, if you don't understand something. If you understand it, it's always easier to remember. Okay, let's try and do some calculation problems now. So this is a typical question. The ammeter reads 0.2 amps. Calculate the internal resistance of the circuit. Now, as always, feel free to pause the video and try this yourself. 
I will take you through the solutions. So how do we do it? As always, it's a KFC technique. We've got the current is 0 0.2 amps. We're missing the VTPD. We've got the EMF is 12 volts from the circuit. And we've got the total resistance or the load resistance is 50 ohms. So looking at that, we've got two equations we can use. And if you notice, we don't have VTPD, so straight away we can't use the first equation. However, we do have uh, I, big R and E, so we can use the second equation. So we plug it into our equation and we work out the answer to give the internal resistance, which is about 10 ohms. And so, again, we're using the KFC technique. So, OK, so as always, folks, I like to try it yourself. So pause the video, have a go at this question and see how you do with it, folks. OK. So hopefully you did the KFC technique. So we write down what we've got. And notice I've been a wee bit sneaky. I've actually given you the VTPD in this case and not the big R. But if you're doing the KFC technique, you should realise that there are two equations you can use. Because we don't have big R and we're looking for little r, you can't use the second equation, but you can use the first. So you just plug in your numbers and then you solve it and you get the resistance rounded to one significant figure as seven ohms. So hopefully you were able to get that and that was OK, folks. Moving on, folks, let's look at a slightly more interesting example. So it says that I'm to read 0 0.5 amps, calculate the internal resistance of the circuit. So the same kind of format, but you'll notice straight away, we now have two resistors in parallel. So pause the video, try it yourself. If you think you know what to do, I'll take you through the answer. As always, our KFC technique. So we write down what we've got from the question. And then the key thing here is, because he's in parallel, we can't really do anything with it. So we can, uh, what we can do, however, is add them together and replace them with a single resistor of the same value. Now. We can do it using this equation, or you may, remember, you may remember that we trick where if you've got two resistors in parallel that are the same resistance, the total resistance is just simply half of one of them, which is this case 2.5 ohms. So that is now our total resistance. And if you want, you could even replace these two resistors with a single resistor. So it looks just like our previous circuit and you should be able to carry the calculation on from there. So remember, we've got two choices. We've got big R, we want little r, so we're really using the second equation. Plug it in, and we get our answer is about 28 ohms. So hopefully you were able to follow that. If not, play it again and try it yourselves. So as always, I'd like you to try this yourself. So pause the video, try this one, and I'll take you through it again. So similar question to before, but I've changed the numbers around a little bit. We've got two resistors in parallel, 10 and 10 ohms. So we could use this or use our trick, which tells us the total resistance is simply 5 ohms. Then we write down our equation. We pick the one that we've got. It's the second equation in this case. Plug in our numbers and we get our answer in this case as 21 ohms. So hopefully you were able to do that, folks. So in summary, Learn the definition for key terms, EMF and loss faults in particular. Those are the most common ones that you will come across. Make sure you're aware of what an open and a short circuit are. State how to measure the EMF, i.e. when there is no current drawn from the circuit. Use your KFC technique to solve calculation problems. You may have to use your assistant rules for series and parallel circuits.